I am your father. Do you recognize the voice? Today, we'll explore the journey of how this man went from a young boy with a speech impediment to one of the most recognizable voices in television and cinema. Welcome back to the Golden Stars of Hollywood, where we commemorate the legendary figures of the silver screen. James Earl Jones is a renowned actor who has been a formidable influence on the world of entertainment for over seven decades. Jones was born on January 17, 1931, during the Great Depression era in Arkabutla, Mississippi. He later moved to Michigan where he was largely cared for by his maternal grandparents. Shortly after relocating, he developed a stammer in his speech that lasted into his early adulthood. However, he used poetry and acting to overcome his struggle with speech, which ultimately led to his deep resonant voice becoming the cornerstone of his success in stage, television, and movie roles. Jones began his studies at the University of Michigan as a pre-med student in 1951, but later changed his major to drama to focus on acting. It was here that he discovered his passion for acting and developed his powerful voice. He obtained a bachelor's degree in arts while serving as a cadet in the Army Reserve Officer Training Corps. After graduating in 1953, he joined the United States Army as a second lieutenant where he served for a couple of years. Shortly after being honorably discharged, he ventured to New York City to study at the American Theater Wing, where he honed his craft and embarked on his journey into the world of theater. Jones was off to a great start securing roles such as Shakespeare's Othello for a 1955 Michigan production, as well as a short-lived play The Egghead by Molly Kazan in 1957. The budding actor made his Broadway debut in a featured role as Edward the House Butler in the world premiere of the Broadway play Sunrise at Campobello by Dor Shari in 1957. The biographical play depicts the life of the 32nd United States president, Franklin D. Roosevelt, and his family, from 1921 to 1924, as he launched a political comeback that would eventually propel him to the presidency. Jones continued to showcase his talent with the New York Shakespeare Festival from 1961 into the early 1970s. He held various roles in several Shakespeare productions, including A Midsummer Night's Dream, Othello, King Lear, and Hamlet. He's regarded as one of the greatest Shakespearean actors of his day. My very noble and approved good masters, that I have taken away this old man's daughter. It is most true, true, I have married her. He also encountered significant personal milestones during this time, including meeting Broadway actress Julianne Marie during his portrayal of Othello. Their relationship culminated in marriage in 1968, though ultimately, they parted ways in 1972. Delving into the world of film, Jones made a splash with his debut in Stanley Kubrick's Doctor Strangelove or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb, a 1964 war comedy film about an unhinged American general who orders a nuke attack on the Soviet Union, triggering a path to nuclear destruction that a war room of generals and political leaders desperately tries to stop. He performed the character of Lieutenant Lothar Zog, a bombardier assigned to Kong's B-52. Jones returned to the stage in 1967 to play Jack Jefferson in Howard Sackler's play, The Great White Hope alongside Jane Alexander. The Great White Hope is loosely based on African-American boxer Jack Johnson. The three-act play explores the fans' desire for a Caucasian boxer to end Johnson's heavyweight championship reign. The play follows fictional heavyweight champion Jack Jefferson, who is prosecuted for interracial marriage to his wife Eleanor under the Mann Act. The couple flees to Europe, where Jefferson finds work. He learns his criminal charges will be dropped if he participates in a fight to restore the heavyweight title to a white contender. When Jefferson refuses, Eleanor takes her life. The play ends with Jefferson losing the championship match he had refused. Due to the show's success, it was moved to Broadway a year later. It eventually won the Pulitzer Prize for Drama as well as Jones' first Tony Award for Best Actor in a Play. 
Jones extended his on-screen influence by becoming the first celebrity to appear in the children's television series Sesame Street, which premiered in 1969. He made a significant contribution to the cultural landscape of children's television. His voice became a familiar presence on the show, where he lent his talents to various segments, narrations, and character voices. Jones's rich vocal delivery enhanced the educational content of the program and brought life to scenes such as the iconic Sesame Street alphabet and numbers recitation. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. <laughs> His involvement not only entertained, but also educated generations of children, highlighting the importance of literacy and communication skills in a captivating and memorable manner. During the 1970s, James Earl Jones continued to solidify his reputation as one of the most prominent and versatile actors of his generation. He reunited with Jane Alexander for the film adaptation of The Great White Hope, playing the same role he received the Tony Award for in the stage play in 1969. This marked his first leading role in a film in which he earned an Academy Award nomination for Best Actor, making him the second black male performer to do so, with Sidney Poitier being the first. In addition, he earned a Golden Globe for Most Promising Newcomer Male in 1971. In the later part of the decade, Jones made his iconic voice debut as Darth Vader in Star Wars, A New Hope. Although he voiced the character, David Prowse was the actor behind the mask, but director George Lucas didn't think his accent fit the tone of the character, so Jones created the voiceover for the role. The 1980s would become the era that Jones demonstrates remarkable versatility through significant contributions across various mediums, including his portrayal of Othello alongside actress Cecilia Hart, whom he met on the set of the Stephen Bochco series, Paris, leading to their marriage in 1982. Early in the decade, he played the role of the villainous Thulsa Doom in Conan the Barbarian, showcasing his commanding presence in the fantasy adventure genre. Simultaneously, Jones maintained his iconic status in film by lending his distinctive voice to the character of Darth Vader reprising the roles for the sequels, The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, the final installment of the original trilogy. Jones then returned to his first love of the stage with a critically acclaimed performance in August Wilson's Fences, 1987, on Broadway. Fences is set in segregated Pittsburgh in the 1950s and tells the story of Troy Maxson, a former Negro League baseball star who now works as a sanitation worker. Frustrated with his circumstances, Troy strives to regain control of his life through his familial relationships, but ultimately betrays them, altering their lives forever. Earning praise for his portrayal of the complex character Troy Maxson, Jones went on to win his second Tony Award for Best Actor in a Play, further solidifying his reputation as a powerhouse in the theater world. Moving strongly through the 80s, Jones released more notable works, such as his role as King Jaffe Joffer in Coming to America, and a reclusive misanthrope named Terrence Mann in the 1989 film Field of Dreams, which was nominated for Best Picture at the Academy Awards. The 1990s was an ambitious decade for Jones as he established roles in film and animation on the big screen. He kicked off the decade with a memorable role in the Cold War thriller The Hunt for Red October, where his commanding presence added depth to the ensemble cast. Transitioning to family-friendly fare, Jones lent his distinctive voice to the character of Mufasa in multiple medias of the Disney's animated classic, The Lion King, delivering a performance that resonated with audiences of all ages. Alongside his film work, Jones also showcased his versatility in the coming-of-age sports comedy, The Sandlot, where his portrayal of Mr. Myrtle, the wise and reclusive owner of the titular Sandlot, added heart and humor to the beloved film. Throughout the 1990s, Jones starred in three television series, Gabriel's Fire, Pros and Cons, and Under One Roof. Out of eight Emmy Award nominations, Jones is a two-time recipient, winning them both in the same year. In 1991, 
He earned an Emmy for his role on Heat Wave, winning Outstanding Supporting Actor in a Miniseries or Special, and another for his role on Gabriel's Fire for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Drama Series. In addition to lending his voice to iconic characters throughout his career, Jones' baritone voice became the recognizable tagline for CNN, uttering the phrases, This is CNN, and This is CNN International, which opened the network's news day morning show. This is CNN. At the turn of the century, entering his 70s, Jones was a seasoned pro whose reign left an indelible mark on theater and film. Yet, he was not done. In Star Wars Revenge of the Sith, released in 2005, the silver screen legend reprised his iconic role as the voice of Darth Vader. Reverting to his theater chops, Jones starred in the Broadway revival of On Golden Pond, portraying Norman Thayer Jr., husband to Ethel Thayer. The play tells the story of an elderly couple enjoying a summer lake house in Maine as they come to grips with the husband's growing age and his prolonged alienation from his recently engaged daughter. Jones received a Tony Award nomination for Best Actor in a Play. Several years later, he appeared on the big screen in the comedy film Welcome Home Roscoe Jenkins as Roscoe Stephen, Papa Jenkins Sr., the patriarch of the Jenkins family. Although the movie wasn't credited for standout performances, his portrayal added warmth and humor to the ensemble cast. In the second decade of the new century, Jones continued to demonstrate his mastery of the stage with captivating performances in a series of acclaimed productions. Returning to the Broadway scene in 2010, Jones starred opposite Vanessa Redgrave in the revival of Driving Miss Daisy, portraying Hope Colburn. Miss Daisy Worthen is a 72-year-old widow who has lost the ability to drive safely, causing her son to hire Hope Colburn to serve as her chauffeur. His nuanced performance explored themes of race and friendship. A couple of years later, in the Broadway revival of The Best Man, he played the role of former President Arthur Hochstater, a womanizing idealist and working-class member competing for the U.S. President's office. Jones received a Tony nomination for Best Actor in a Play. Continuing his streak of theatrical excellence into the middle of the decade, the actor graced the stage in a revival of the classic comedy, You Can't Take It With You, charming audiences with his comedic timing and warmth in the role of Grandpa Vanderhoff. Starring opposite Cicely Tyson in the Broadway revival of The Gin Game in 2015, reaffirmed Jones' status as a titan of the stage, enchanting audiences with his unmatched talent and presence. In 2016, Rogue One, a Star Wars story saw James Earl Jones returning to the voice of Darth Vader. Despite not physically appearing in the film, Vader's presence was keenly felt through Jones's commanding and menacing voice. His return to the role in Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker in 2019, served as a reminder of the enduring impact of Vader's character, showcasing Jones's mastery of bringing one of cinema's most iconic villains to life. Additionally, Jones's memorable appearance in Coming to America in 2021 demonstrated his ability to bring depth and authenticity to his roles, further solidifying his status as a legendary figure in film and entertainment. As we celebrate the extraordinary career of James Earl Jones, we are reminded of the timeless power of storytelling and the profound influence of those who bring characters to life with authenticity and conviction. His legacy will continue to inspire and resonate with audiences for generations to come. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the life and career of James Earl Jones. If you enjoy stories like these, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications for more tales of the golden stars of Hollywood right here on Celebrity Headquarters.